Do you have a product or a service to cross sell to your customers? Are you finding it difficult to get customers or clients interested in those cross sells? More importantly, do you want new steps and strategies for how to introduce those cross sells in a way customers or clients absolutely can't resist? If you do, just give me a moment and we're gonna jump into some tips on how to do so. Hi, I'm Sean Casemore and I help you learn how to be a high performing sales professional so that you can earn more money in less time. If that sounds good to you, make sure you click that subscribe button so you'll be notified each and every time I release a new video and click the like on this video if this is something you like. And of course, if you have your own strategies, comment below and share them with everybody that's here. Let's start with a real quick definition. There's an upsell and there's a cross sell. I mean, there's other strategies, but let's just differentiate the two really quickly just to be clear so that you're not confused on what I'm gonna share with you. An upsell is essentially more of. So think about you go to a restaurant, you order a Diet Coke and they say, do you want the ginormous size of that? Well, they're trying to upsell you. A cross sell is something that can be considered an add on and hopefully, but not always, hopefully it's complementary to what you purchase. So a cross sell might be something where you order dinner and I talk you into a ticket for a future dinner, right? It's nothing to do with dinner, I'm actually, upselling you into a future, but I'm cross-selling you. First off, let's start with a quick definition, if you will, the difference between an upsell and a cross-sell, because I find a lot of sales professionals get this confused. So for the purpose of what I'm gonna to explain to you, we're gonna talk about cross-selling. Just let me differentiate. So an upsell is where I sell you kind of a, a premium or more of whatever it is you're buying. So you order a Diet Coke, I upsell you into the ginormous bucket of Diet Coke versus the small, glass that you were thinking of buying or the small can, okay? A cross sell is where I'm selling something to you that is added to that initial order. So going with that fast food example still, I might cross sell you on dessert to be added to your order. It's not part of the original package. It's not more of something that you were thinking of buying, but I've cross sold you on something else that you can add to that order, which again, increases the overall value. What we're going to talk about here is creative and getting creative in your cross sell. So just to start with a clear definition, let's get going. So I alluded to this in the definition, but you want to ensure that your cross sales are complementary, complementary to whatever it is you're selling. So let's say for a moment you're selling capital equipment, right? A large expenditure. A cross sell may be service for that capital equipment. In fact, you might not even be selling the service, but you might be asked to cross sell and introduce the service manager, for example, who can handle that. So there's a good example of a cross sell in a capital equipment environment. What I find often happens is sales professionals, right, aren't really prepared on how to present the cross sell so that the customer or client says, you know what, that's a good idea. Let's investigate. Let's move on with that. Let's move forward. Let's sign the agreement. So step one is making sure for, you know, for whatever it is you sell, that you're clear on what the cross sells are that you could offer to your customers step one. Step two is, once you know what those cross sells are, what language will you use to ensure that they're seen as complementary? You can imagine in that example of the fast food restaurant I shared earlier, where you, you place your order, maybe I upsell you into some larger Diet Coke and a larger burger or something, large fries. And then I say, um, uh, I'm not sure if you, I'm not sure if you really, I haven't thought about this. If you want dessert, I don't know, would you want dessert? Do you want, do you want dessert? I mean, if you want dessert, we do have these apple pie things here. I, I don't know if you really want this. Is that going to appeal to you? Is that going to convince you that, hey, that upsell is something I want? Or I could say, you know, most people, when they buy this meal, they're hungry. I'm sure you're here because you're hungry. What you want to compliment this with is this apple pie. I'm telling you right now, it, right? It adds to the overall impact. You're going to be full. It's going to last hours. And you're going to get a great value because it's not that much more, a little bit better. I don't sell fast food, but you get the point. So you want to make sure that you're prepared as a sales professional to introduce the cross sales in a way that makes sense to your customers or clients. I suggest you start this by again, writing down what are the cross sales I could offer and then how will I best introduce these? What's the language I will use? So that's kind of Step number one, moving to step number two. Step number three are the three steps I want you to take to transition from your normal conventional sale to a cross sell. Assuming you've taken step two, which I mentioned, which is you've mentioned the cross sell early on in the conversation, maybe more than once, that's okay. As long as it makes sense in the dialogue and you're ready to do so, we're good to go. 
Three steps to take. So you've just said, yes, Sean, I do want to move forward with that capital equipment purchase. Say, great, I'm going to send you a quote. Now, a couple things I want to mention to you. I'm going to include some examples of that service plan I mentioned to you earlier. So step one is you're saying to your prospect at this point, hey, I'm going to include some cross-sell options for you. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two, I submit the quote and it contains the cross-sell options very clearly and not a cross-sell, not here is your service package or here is your apple pie. It's different options because again, remember options move people into considering what they should do versus giving them a yes, no. So I might give you a 12 month service plan. I might give you an option for a 24 month and a 36 month, giving you options and ways to take a look at this overall and determine what best fits you. So when I present cross-sells, there's options. That's the second step in the third overall step. I'm, I'm losing it here, but I, I think I got it on track. Let's go to the third step I want to share with you is then when we have our follow-up conversation where we review that quote together before you've made your decision. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to watch my videos. This is a key step to trying to close anything. Okay. I'm not going to get into it. Here's the point. The third step is during the conversation where you're reviewing the quote together, you say to your prospect, did you have a chance to look through the quote? And they say, yeah, I did have, I got some questions. Great. Before we just talked about them, did you also consider those cross sell options? Did you also, and you can call them cross options, or you could say, did you also consider those service options that I mentioned? What you can say then is, did you also consider those service options that I included as part of this package? as part of your consideration. So that's a third step, okay? Because I wanna bring this out in the conversation we're having. So just to recap, three steps to move from the conventional sale to that cross sale is that step one, you mention before you submit that quote, you're gonna include the cross sell and you include it on the quote. Step two, there are options in the cross sell. It's not a take it or leave it, it's which one would you like? And step three is when you review the quote with your prospect, you bring that up in the conversation. You say, did you get a chance to review the, these different service options or different options I shared as part of that service package, okay? Three steps to transition from a regular sale to a cross sale. Now, one last tip I wanna share with you. What if the prospect says, nah, this is really good. You've given me some good things to think about it. So let me get back more of an objection. And again, there's other videos on that. But if you're faced with that, if you've shared and done all the steps we've discussed to this point, and they say, let me think about it. You simply respond with, great. May I ask a quick question? They're going to say, okay. They say, which part of the quote of the proposal, which part of our conversation would you like to think through? And then you don't say anything else. That's it. Which part of our conversation, or if they've reviewed the quote, you've gone through it together, which part of this quote would you like to think through? Because what's going to happen is they're either going to say to you, what do you mean by that? Which is good. It opens up the door for further conversation to allow you to flush out what the real issue is. Or they say, well, it's this part, which again, they're pointing to a possible objection. So they might say, well, you know what? It's this service package. I'm just, I'm not sure if it's the right thing for us. Say, oh, interesting. Which part of the service package do you think is not really best fit for you? I might be able to give you some recommendations, right? So notice what I did there. Indirectly, this is a way to flush out the objection. So I want you to make sure if they say, let me think about it, you follow up with those steps to ensure that you flush out whatever the real issue is so that you can address it, okay? And once you've got that done, once you've addressed that issue or presuming that they don't wanna think about the way to go, you sign the deal immediately and here's what you say. Appreciate the chance to work with you. I'm gonna get started on this right now. Let me get some information from you. You want to lock that sale in any sale by starting immediately and telling them you're starting immediately and have some questions you can ask them to start things immediately, right? And again, there's videos on closing where I expand on that, but I wanted to share that here. So there are the steps that you can use in order to ensure that your cross sales are more interesting, more creative, and ultimately you close more cross sales when it comes to your customers or clients. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos on different sales strategies, you can always check out my channel for further ideas. Also, make sure that if you like this video, click like below. That tells me this is the kind of content you wanna see. And comment if you've got strategies you use that help you close cross-sells. Just drop a comment below and I'll make sure to respond. Last but not least, if you did enjoy these, this video and these series you may be watching right now, make sure you click that subscribe button that just helps me to spread the word about different sales strategies. I'm on a mission to make more high-performing sales professionals and you can help and that's how you do it. So make sure you click on these next videos and I'll see you in the next one.